वेलकम टू इन साइट ऑफ थर्मोलॉजी दिस इज डॉक्टर अमृत वेलकमिंग यू टू एनदर इंपॉर्टेंट लेक्चर टुडे वी आर स्टार्टिंग हाउ टू डायग्नोज हॉर्नर सिंड्रोम यूजिंग सर्टन फार्मोकोलॉजिकल टेस्ट सो द स्टडी और द लेक्चर एक्चुअली एम्स एट टेलिंग यू हाउ डू यू टेस्ट फॉर हॉर्नर सिंड्रोम फार्मोकोलॉजिकली सो बेसिकली इज इट हॉर्नर सिंड्रोम और नॉट for that we have basically two sets of drugs that is cocaine and the aprocloridin and once you have diagnosed that it is horner syndrome then the next question is to localize the next task is to localize the lesion of the horner syndrome whether it's a first order horner syndrome second order horner syndrome or third order horner syndrome so there are two drugs that we are going to use to diagnose the horner syndrome and in the first place so these are the cocaine and aprocloridin so the first drug is cocaine cocaine is available as 4% and as 10% concentration now let us understand what does cocaine do now we know that the third order neuron is nothing but it is the long ciliary nerves and these long ciliary nerves are going to supply the dilator pupilla here which are present in the iris and this long ciliary nerve that means which is actually forming the uh, uh so here this is the nerve terminal so this is the presynaptic terminal and over here they are going to release what is called as the norepinephrine so using this norepinephrine the iris dilator is going to help in dilatation of the pupil now what happens is that there are certain transporters which are present in the presynaptic terminal and these transporters will transport the norepinephrine back into the nerve terminal so what cocaine does is cocaine will block these norepinephrine transporters so that there will be increased concentration of the norepinephrine within that synapse okay between the long ciliary nerve and the iris dilator muscle so because of the increased norepinephrine in the eye what will happen there will be increased sympathetic activity and then there will be a dilatation of the pupil so for all this to happen the first order the second order and the third order neurons of the sympathetic system should be normal only if the neurons are normal there will be norepinephrine secreted by this neuron into the synapse however if there's any problem whether at even at the first order second order or at the third order there will be no production of the norepinephrine and there will be no norepinephrine in the synapse so when there's no norepinephrine in the synapse cocaine cannot block even if the cocaine blocks the reuptake of norepinephrine it will not be of any use so let me explain it to you uh, what happens in an eye who has horner syndrome and then you instill the cocaine drop suppose let us take this patient you can see the right eye the right eye is showing some amount of ptosis and there is a meiosis here and this pupil is the normal size so there is a nisocoria that is difference in the size of the pupil So now if you instill cocaine drops that is about 4% or 10% what happens is that in a person who has horner syndrome because the first second or third order horners the sympathetic system is affected and the norepinephrine is not available at the synapse so even if the uh, cocaine is going to block the presynaptic terminal uptake of the norepinephrine there will be no dilatation of the pupil however in a normal pupil what will happen because there is norepinephrine present here in the synapse this cocaine is going to block the reuptake and increase the concentration of the norepinephrine within the synapse and what will happen this norepinephrine will now cause dilatation of the pupil so what happens with cocaine in horner syndrome is that the horner pupil will not dilate but the normal pupil will dilate so what will happen there is an exaggeration of an isocoria so initially if this was the difference now the difference you can see has increased so an isocoria increases because of the cocaine because the normal pupil is able to dilate and the horner pupil will not dilate so that is one diagnosis of horner using the uh, cocaine and remember that the the eye which has horner syndrome will not dilate with cocaine The next test which is there for diagnosis is the aprocloridin test and this test basically works on the principle of hypersensitivity or supersensitivity. Now the aprocloridin concentration that we use over here is about 0.1%, okay? Now uh, what happens uh, what happens actually in the real world is that that the cocaine might might not be available so readily. So it has been replaced by the aprocloridin and this test is also called the iopridin test. 
okay so what is the mechanism of action of apraclonidin apraclonidin basically is an alpha 2 adrenergic agonist and has a very weak alpha 1 adrenergic agonist action that means normally the iris dilator okay the type of receptors the sympathetic receptors which are present in the iris dilator muscle are actually the alpha 1 receptor okay and the apraclonidin 0.1 person is a very weak alpha adrenergic agonist that means it has a very weak action on alpha 1 receptors now what happens in horner syndrome is that that uh, there is a, de a because of the sympathetic denervation there is a hypersensitivity of the alpha 1 receptor so what hap what does it mean is that if you have this posillary uh, the long ciliary nerves okay so this is the synapse and these are the iris dilator muscle so what happens whenever the sympathetic system is broken either at the first level second level or third level what is going to happen is there is a there is a decreased sympathetic nerve supply to the iris dilator so this is called sympathetic denervation now in response to the sympathetic denervation the iris dilator or the pupillary dilator muscle is going to upregulate its production of alpha 1 receptor what i mean to say is that the alpha 1 receptor population will actually now start increasing in number now because of so many uh, alpha 1 receptors which are present in the iris dilator muscle now even this weak apraclonidin which is a weak alpha 1 agonist is going to act at these alpha 1 receptor increase population and thereby cause dilatation of the pupil okay so now what will happen if a person has horner syndrome and he's given apraclonidin drops let us see now suppose this is an eye of a patient okay and this in the right eye he has horner syndrome which is actually identified by ptosis and smaller pupil and this is a normal pupil in the left eye now if you instill uh, the apraclonidin let us see what happens the part of the eye or the eye which has Horner syndrome will have supersensitivity or uh, sympathetic supersensitivity. That means the eye will have increased amount of alpha 1 receptors. Because of this supersensitivity, what will happen? Even if you install aplatulinin, which is a weak alpha 1 agonist, the pupil with the Horner syndrome is going to dilate okay now however the normal pupil will have the normal population of alpha 1 receptor and therefore this pupil will not react with the apraclonidin will not react to the apraclonidin installation and therefore the normal pupil will remain just like that so what has happened in this case this pupil was smaller initially the horner pupil has become larger and the larger normal pupil has remained the same size so here what you are seeing is actually reversal of an isochoria okay so in cocaine test we what we saw was actually the exaggeration of an isochoria or increasing of an isochoria but in an apraclonidin test what we are seeing is the reversible of an isochoria okay so remember with apraclonidin the horner pupil will dilate and the normal pupil will not dilate and additional finding that you can see is that the ptosis also may resolve with apraclonidin now here are certain, some important points are there for us to remember number one is that the denervation must be present long enough for the receptor upregulation to occur that means all that increased population of alpha 1 receptor you need some enough time uh, between the denervation and the upregulation now however it has been seen that even uh, within few hours of carotid dissection okay now there is there are positive tests which have been observed sometimes in case of acute horner syndrome if you do a uh, apraclonidin test there will be that the test will be actually negative because there has not been any upregulation of the receptors by that time moreover apraclonidin should not be used in case of pediatric horner syndrome the reason is that apraclonidin has a risk of cns and respiratory depression so this is very very important now once you have diagnosed that it is horner syndrome using the cocaine test and using the apraclonidin test the next step is to localize the level of lesion that means whether it is present at the first level or it is present at the second order or the third order neuron now in this we have two types of uh, pharmacological agents that we are going to use so we are going to use either one person hydroxyamphetamine test or we are going to use either uh, the one person phenylephrine test 
Now let us try to understand the hydroxyamphetamine test. Here the concentration that we are using is 1%. Now how does this hydroxyamphetamine works? Hydroxyamphetamine will cause the release of stored norepinephrine from the third order neuron junction to the iris. So if this is the presynaptic terminal which is having all the stored uh, norepinephrine, so what will happen? The hydroxyamphetamine is going to act on this and cause the increased release of this norepinephrine. And as the norepinephrine increases, the sympathetic activity increases and thereby you will have dilatation of the pupil. Now let us see how does this mechanism of action help us to understand whether it is a third order, first order or second order neuron. Now let us understand what happens in a third order neuron. Now if there is a third order neuron problem, it means that the, the long ciliary nerve itself is affected, right? So if there's a third order neuron, the third order neuron is not going to have any norepinephrine stored in the presynaptic terminal. So now to such a presynaptic terminal, if you're going to give hydroxyamphetamine, since there is no stored norepinephrine, no amount of norepinephrine is going to come out in the synapse. And as there is no norepinephrine in the synapse, there's no sympathetic activity and therefore there will be no pupillary response to hydroxyamphetamine drops. So in a patient with confirmed uh, Horner syndrome, if you put hydroxyamphetamine and you do not see any response, it means that the patient has third order neuron Horner syndrome. So I hope that is clear. Now what about if a person has first or second order neuron Horner syndrome? Now in the first or second order neuron uh, here, the third order neuron is normal, right? So if the third order neuron is normal, it does have the norepinephrine stored. So once you give hydroxyamphetamine to this presynaptic terminal, what will happen? The norepinephrine will be released into the synaptic cleft. And since the norepinephrine is going to be released, the sympathetic activity will increase. And now the pupil is going to react to that sympathetic activity. And now you're going to see midriasis or dilatation of pupil. So remember, with hydroxyamphetamine, if you see midriasis or dilatation of pupil, it means that the lesion is not in the third, but in the first or second order neuron. Okay, now be very careful if you have used cocaine before because cocaine is going to interfere with the uptake and efficacy of hydroxyamphetamine as such. So therefore, if you're using cocaine for the confirmation of diagnosis, then give at least 72 hours and then you go for the hydroxyamphetamine testing. But the, uh, the question over here is that suppose a person is actually having painful Horner syndrome, it is better to go with neuroimaging and not wait for these pharmacological tests to confirm the diagnosis. Now another test because again hydroxyamphetamine might not be so readily available is the phenylephrine 1% test. Here again the principle that we are using is a principle of denervation supersensitivity. Okay, so whenever there's denervation the normal innervation is lost. So what happens? The, uh, uh, the receptors themselves will become more sensitive to the neurotransmitter by increasing their number, right? So again, as I told you, the alpha-1 receptors are going to be more. So whenever there is a third order lesion example, now here what happens is in a third order lesion, say Horner syndrome, what happens is that we know that there's no norepinephrine and this third order neuron is totally not working. So within the synaptic left, you do not have any norepinephrine. Now, what if we actually give the patient phenylephrine? Now, phenylephrine will act on the alpha-1 receptor. It's an adrenergic agonist, right? And we know that when the third order lesion is there, there will be hyperactivity or super sensitivity of the iris dilator muscle because of the increased alpha-1 receptors. So this phenylephrine is now going to act on these alpha-1 receptor and what response will you see? You will see dilatation of the pupil or midriasis. So with one, one uh, person phenylephrine in a third order neuron lesion, you are going to see dilatation. So this is totally opposite to what you see in one person hydroxyamphetamine. Now, what about if a person has first and second order Horner syndrome? In first and second order Horner syndrome, you again, you will not have any norepinephrine. However, there will be uh, no uh, super sensitivity also. There's no denervation, hypersensitivity or super sensitivity. And therefore, there will be no dilatation of pupil with this 1% phenylephrine. So the concentration that we're using here is very important because we are using a diluted form of phenylephrine, which will normally not cause any dilatation of the pupil. 
So now let us summarize for the diagnosis of the Horner syndrome. Okay, we are using two, two drugs that is cocaine and aproclonidin. If you see no dilatation with 4% cocaine or if you see dilatation with 1 point, sorry, 0.1% aproclonidin, it means that it is a Horner syndrome. And now for the confirmation of the lesion and localization of the lesion, now what we have is 1% hydroxyamphetamine. In 1% hydroxyamphetamine test, the first order and the second order Horners will dilate and the third order Horner will not dilate. Whereas with 1% phenylephrine, the first and the second order will not dilate and the third order will dilate. So I hope that is clear to you. So that's all for today. Thank you and have a nice day.